Start where you are, use what you have and do what you can, said Arthur Ashe. So let's dive into today's topic of prevention of surgical site infections. So the first point I have to tell you is that hand hygiene is the most important factor in preventing surgical site infections. The surgeon has to wash his hands for at least two minutes. If you're not familiar with the five moments of hand hygiene, they are one, before touching the patient, two, after touching the patient, three, when exposed to bodily fluids, four, on touching the patient's surroundings, And five is before and after any procedure. So before it and after it, you have to wash your hands. So these are the five moments of hand hygiene. So both soap and water and alcohol based hand rubs have equal efficacy. All right. The only thing that you have to take note is that soap and water has to be used after you've used the toilet and after your hands have been visibly soiled so if your hands are visibly soiled or you've used the toilet you have to use soap and water otherwise both those have equal efficacy next is patient preparation so before the surgery the patients should shower or bathe full body with a soap which can be antimicrobial or non-antimicrobial or an antiseptic agent on at least the night before the operative day Next is part preparation. So the first thing in part preparation is hair removal. So earlier shaving used to be done, but then we found out that shaving increases the chances of infection because it can cause injuries, all right? So now we do hair clipping. So a hair clipper is used. We can clean the part with betadine, which is povidone iodine, or we can use a chlorhexidine plus alcohol-based solution, and this is more effective. Antimicrobial prophylaxis is important and we have to do it within 30 to 60 minutes before the surgery. Alright, and if it is a prolonged case, you have to repeat the antibiotic dose after 4 hours. Hypothermia has to be prevented. We have to maintain normothermia. So for that, we maintain the OT temperature to about 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. And a relative humidity of 50 to 60 percentage has to be maintained. Right, a bear hugger can be used, which just provides warmth to the patient. It blows warm air over the patient and prevents the patient from getting hypothermia. Hyperglycemia has to also be prevented, so we have to maintain an adequate glycemic control of less than 200 mg per deciliter. Next is maintaining a positive pressure in the OT. Why is this important? Because otherwise, if there is a negative pressure in the OT, air from outside, that is air from the other zones of the operation theatre, can flow into this zone, which we have kept it as aseptic zone, right? And that can cause contamination. So we maintain the pressure in the OT 2 mm Hg above the atmospheric pressure. We also have to supplement oxygen in the immediate post-op period so that the patient does not have the risk factor of hypoxemia which can also lead to surgical site infection. So that is all about prevention of surgical site infections. You can also remember some additional factors to prevent surgical site infections which we do such as proper hemostasis and dissection, washing the cavity with a saline solution and all of that, right? But these are some of the main factors I want you to remember and it will be very useful for your exams. So if you've liked this video, please subscribe, like, share and comment so that I will be encouraged to post more of these videos. Thank you.